The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. You know what I noticed in the book of Revelation? It said that the dragon gave the beast his power seat great authority. You know what that tells me? That this system, this institution of the system has been here for a very long time. We found out words such as daughter, virgin daughter. We're finding out that the woman is a mixture of those who turn their back on God and the system that they worship. We found out that the woman does not belong to the beast, but she chooses to shine on top of the beast. You see, that woman does not belong to the beast because she would be part of the beast. She would be another head of the beast, but she's not. She sits on top of the beast, and the beast hates her. The beast does not like her. The beast is going to kill her. The beast is going to consume her flesh. She does not belong to the beast, but she's so prideful in her ways. She's fornicated so much. She's lost the path of truth. A lot of people, they read the book of Jeremiah and they say, wow, Israel's bad. Well, see, you have to complete your reading before you say that. Every country has rotten people in it. Every country has rotten people in it. Every country has spies. You know, Babylon by itself was not as archaic as you think, but what happened was Babylon was advised internally by what? Sorcerers, witches. They are the ones who set up these other gods who advised King Nebuchadnezzar. They were right there in his council. Astrologers, soothsayers, that comprised the leadership of Babylon. You see, they advised King Nebuchadnezzar getting him in all sorts of trouble. We can't be so soon to forget that King Nebuchadnezzar did, in fact, bow himself to the God of gods, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He did. But you know what happened? He was bound by the laws of Babylon. Bound by the laws of Babylon. And he was advised of very dark entities. In fact, they were spies because they spied on Daniel all the time. In fact, one of the spies spied so much that he in turn loved and respected Daniel. You guys remember that in our Daniel study? That's what happens to some spies. They're converted. But you see, King Nebuchadnezzar and the way the system was built, the system was built to be its own entity. In other words, it didn't matter who the king was, the system ran away. You see, everybody was accountable by the law that was written. Even if King Nebuchadnezzar made a decree, which he did, made many decrees, he himself could not break the very decree he created. Once it was in the system, everybody was held accountable, even the king. You guys see how that works? How crooked is that? And the spies forecasted devices against King Nebuchadnezzar by the system. And you know what? Guess what our system is comprised of? Laws. Even if Congress passes a law, can they break it? No. Nope. They'll be held accountable. And they pay for it all the time. You see, the system, they've given a system life, and they shouldn't have done that. Same thing that's happened to Israel has also happened to the United States. You know what? The woman that sits atop that beast, the one with mystery, Babylon, great mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, she's much more expansive than you think. It's not one little tiny place, one little group of people. It's not just a woman. She's the mother of harlots because the origination of her ways was spread throughout the world. When we read in Jeremiah, we see examples of what they did. They, too, were called a harlot. They, too, committed fornication. They, too, became an abomination. And guess what? We have repeated the exact same things. Those who are not washed by the blood of the Lamb, those who do not reside under the blood of the Lamb, are, in fact, part of this woman. Her characteristics match the five foolish versions I know it's hard to believe, but it's in the book of Jeremiah. You see, because there was a point when 
She saw the destruction. She made herself fair, cleaned herself up, painted her face. And you know what she did? She did all that and she cried out to her lovers, not to God, to her lovers. How foolish was she? She was a wife that acted treacherously. And you know what? This is so very important. There was a cry heard in the book of Revelation that said, Come out of her, my people, that you do not partake of her plagues. Come out of her, my people, that you do not partake of her plagues. She cried to other people after she made herself fair. She didn't make herself fair and clean herself up for God. She did it for the sake of favoritism, for everybody but God. That's why the prophet said, Oh, surely, God, you have deceived this people in Jerusalem, saying, You shall have peace, whereas the sword reaches unto our soul. I chuckled and was sad in my heart. Contrary to popular belief, we do not serve a God who destroys his own children. But you see, once you rebel against God, you continue to walk in your own ways, leaning unto your own understanding, justifying your sins. You, in fact, excommunicate yourself from being his child. And you're no longer his child, but you're a harlot. You're considered a harlot because once you've been his, you're married to him. And if you walk away, you commit whoredoms what you do. That's what we did. Thank God for Jesus Christ. We also saw where the destroyer had been released. We heard about things like the wind. By the way, that word wind means a violent, a violent wind. Not a good wind. A violent wind. That was in Jeremiah 4, 7. How that the destroyer of the Gentiles is on his way, is gone forth from his place to make thy land desolate. Whose land desolate? Israel's land desolate. And thy cities shall be laid waste without inhabitants. Whose land is he talking about? Israel. He's talking about Israel. And he did in fact exile them. But they didn't face all this. Here's a note you need to know in, in Ezekiel uh, I believe it's uh, 39. Help me out someone. I have none of my notes with me. It's okay. I'm going to go by the, uh, by the hip on this one. Ezekiel 39, I believe it is. Yes, yeah, so it is Ezekiel 39. Why is God doing all this? Ezekiel 39, 7. So will I make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel. And I will not let them pollute my holy name anymore. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy One of Israel. Behold, it is come. It is done, saith the Lord God. This is the day whereof I have spoken. All of what the Lord does is to show the world that he is in fact God. As a father would show his child, I am your father. A father has no greater joy than for his child to look at him after the father did something. And you see it in their eyes and it clicks and they say, this is my dad. There's no greater joy a father can have. There's no greater recognition. A, a child can say, this is my dad, all their life. But it's something about the moment when they recognize all that their dad went through, all of what he permits, all of what he has orchestrated at home, and they realize intently that is their dad. Just like you mothers out there, if your child came up to you and kissed you and said, I am so glad you're my mom. You'd fall out of your chair after you cried. And you knew the reasoning behind their statement. They're going to say that to the Lord in the end. They will absolutely know. You see, and he has to do what he has to do because he decreed it. They're going to know that he is Lord. He is God. They will know it. So what's happening now through all this talk about Israel, through all the talk about this woman, who has Mystery Babylon the Great, the great mother of harlots written across her forehead, or the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth written across her forehead. Oh, by the way, if it's written across her forehead, she has a whore's forehead. That sound familiar? It's an advertisement. Did you guys catch that one? In the Bible, in Jeremiah, when it says Israel had a whore's forehead, it was saying that she displayed her intent. 
her intent was displayed openly. Why is Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations on the earth, across the head of this woman? Same characteristic. Key word here, mystery. Mystery does not define her as a nation. Mystery does not define her as a people. Mystery defines her as a collection of things. This is why in her description in Revelation 18, it aligns itself both with Israel and what the Lord said Israel would endure, and it aligns itself with Babylon as to what Babylon will endure. But the promises of destruction were given to both Israel and Babylon. So what has happened here? You see, to understand this, is this is why I'm pausing in the course of this study. To understand this, you must understand the rule and reign of Babylon. There was a dream once. Daniel had a dream of a statue. The statue's head was a head of gold representing King Nebuchadnezzar and all the other kingdoms were inferior to his. But there were other kingdoms who had the same dominion. What was King Nebuchadnezzar's dominion? Before the uh, Persians took him over, what was his dominion? The Lord said his dominion was everywhere life was. That was his dominion. I'm paraphrasing, of course. But that was his dominion. It was all over the earth. How did it dominate the entire earth? How could, listen to me, how could one kingdom have dominion over the entire earth? Anybody know? How can one kingdom have dominion over the entire earth, yet they were located where? In Babylon, right? Iraq. How could they have dominion over the entire earth when they were nowhere near being over the entire earth? How could they have dominion? Well, that's where you do your homework and digging. You see, King Nebuchadnezzar had an influence by the laws that he instituted in Iraq. They actually spread to Persia, Greece. They were all over the place. And people practiced the rule of law as written by some of the finest and best scribes in the world at that time. They practiced what Babylon practiced. And then it held a life of its own and it became spiritual. This is why historians get confused when they read books like this and they say, well, it must have meant it must have been literal, you know, back in the day. God does everything twice. You know that? He will do it literally, and he'll do it spiritually. Everybody misses the spiritual part because they're so locked on to the literal part. Was Babylon destroyed during that time? Yes. But in the Bible it says, in order for all this to be complete, it says Babylon has to fall and be found no more. But we know that did not happen. Right? Everybody's been looking and searching. Yes, this time when Saddam Hussein is taken out, the Bible prophecies could be fulfilled, saying Babylon will be found no more, and no one's going to ever inhabit Babylon. But it didn't happen. Right? It didn't happen. But I'll tell you this. When the Lord comes back and the judgment is set, there will be no habitation of evil upon the face of this earth. How about that? They're not going to be found no more because they're going to be thrown into the lake of fire. See, something else happened. And this is why you read at the end of Revelation when it concerns Gog and Magog. And it's not that I know all this stuff, people. I told you I'm nosy. And I'll pray to the Lord. And I'll say, wait a minute, Lord, your word has to fit. Now, you, you show me what you have to show me. You're going to have me walking around with a wrong thought. I, I'm kind of buggy when it comes to the Father I do. I bug him, and I will not let go. I'm kind of like, you know how Jacob wrestled the angel, and he just refused to let go? That's me. I refuse to let go of certain things. I guess the Lord says, oh, give him something, please. He's saying the same thing over and over and over again, day after day, month after month, year after year. Give him something. After Satan was released, Again, after he was released, in Revelation 28, it says something. You know what he does? And he goes out to see the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth. That's all over the earth. And listen, it says something curious. Comma. It says, and shall go out to see the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth. Comma. Gog and Magog. To gather them together to battle. That word Gog and Magog is a description of what the entire earth came. Why all of a sudden is it Gog and Magog? 
because there's no more Babylon. That's why. So what takes over? Gog and Magog. You know the battle of Gog and Magog that was spoken of in the Bible? This is the final battle right here. This is the final battle right here. And it says, and shall go out to deceive the nations. This is after Satan is bound a thousand years. And then he's released. When he's released, what does he do? And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle. The number of whom is as the sand of the sea. They were gathered together for battle, the final battle. Gog and Magog became the entire earth. But you know what? If we're looking at this literally, you would have missed it. See, that's why the Lord will take you all the way to the end of something, only to have you go back and say, oops, or, or say, okay, and now I have the understanding. The Lord will take you all over this book, leading you from one place to the other, back and forth, the entire time. You're becoming learned in his word. You begin to understand his language beyond the descriptions that are in dictionaries. This is not the dictionary. Gog and Magog being the entire earth. It's not the dictionary. It's not the dictionary that daughter actually means someone who sat under or adopted the teachings of another. Old daughter, old virgin daughter, someone who's carrying away of another place. And it just so happens we learned that in the book of Jeremiah because we needed to understand how in the world does a nation fornicate? How does a nation fornicate? Unless you begin to adopt and mix in the knowledge and the practices and the heritages of another nation with what was given to you first. And if you do that and you keep doing that, you're, you're going to be called a harlot. That's what we see. That's what has happened. It's almost not disputable that the characteristics and the attributes of the harlot match both Israel and Babylon. We know it matches Babylon, but why is it carried over so far in the future? Why? Because the spirit of Babylon never died. It's been resurrected over and over and over. The practices remain the same. And we know that when that principality or spirit that runs over Babylon is destroyed, ah, Gog and Magog have to deal with them too. But that's the final battle. Final battle. Right now we're dealing with this mystery Babylon. It sure is a mystery. It's comprised of many different components. And by those who are washed in the blood of the Lamb, who sincerely in their hearts have accepted him as their personal savior, who continually reach out to him, you have nothing to do with this harlot. But those who have hardened their faces against their brothers and sisters, those who have turned their backs against their brothers and sisters, those who are much like the Sadducees and Pharisees, who also carry the spirit of Babylon within them, and the spirit of Persia within them. We know they are part of this harlot. Now I'll remind you again, ancient Babylon, they did have sorcerers, soothsayers, astrologers. All the smartest people were in Babylon. Babylon was actually a great, great city. One of the oldest cities. One of the oldest nations on the earth. That's where the Sumerian text come from. They documented the fallen angels intently. They messed up everything because they gave this guy named Zachariah Ascension all the wrong information. He ran away with it, published books. And now everybody, when they even attempt to look into the Babylonian text, they get thrown off or turned off or anything. They can never extract truth from that. Again, that was purposeful. That was purposeful. Because the Babylonian text, you talk about Yahweh. You see, they worshipped multiple gods. Daniel introduced to them the one God. They heard Yahweh referred to. It just never built anything up to him. Why? Because the fallen demanded something else. They demanded something else. They demanded blood. And so you see, now you're seeing why Jesus said you must discern these words by the Spirit. You'll get the history, yes. But you can't forsake the spiritual wisdom in this book. It's in there. It's rich. Babylon is expansive as well as this woman. 
who sits atop the beast. Just make, just be sure you're not grafted into this woman. You know what? We're grafted into the branch of God's people. Don't be grafted. Please don't be the one grafted into the clothing of this woman. See, a lot of your brothers and sisters, that great falling away, they constitute this harlot sitting atop the beast. They constitute this woman sitting atop the beast. How do they do that? Why? Because they can never fully adopt the ways and the practices in their hearts of the ways of our Lord. They can't do it. They turned their back on the little they had and they walked towards the world. The Lord said to love the world is have enmity with God. He told you you're in this world, none of this world. You're, you're very special people. I don't think you know how special you are because we all strive and we reach and we are people of meekness and humility. Therefore, we cannot see our greatness. But one day, mortal man will not be able to look upon you. How do I know this? It's in the Word of God. That's how I know it. When you're changed, you don't know what you shall be, but you know you will be like him. How many people can just look upon Jesus when he comes back? I heard a term one time. He destroys all those who stood against him and everything else with the brightness of his coming. Now, let me tell you something. If something came here and it's destroying stuff through the brightness of its coming, right? It's not here yet, just through its coming. It's destroying stuff. Now, that's a statement. Hmm, everything of that. We're defining this woman that sits atop the beast, but we must understand the spiritual characteristics and the history of what happened to Israel, these proclamations, these declarations, these prophecies that God put on Israel. Why he ejected them into Babylon. What happened to them in Babylon and when they came back? Their Babylonian exile. They prospered. Go figure. They prospered. Much of them did not leave, but they did prosper. While in Babylon, they prospered. It was nothing like Egypt. They prospered. You see, do you see what's happening here? It's a pattern. You're born in this world a special vessel. Some of you, prior to now, prospered in the world. You did. You prospered. And then the world plucked you out, got rid of you. You didn't prosper anymore. I say thank God for that. We're at the end of a matter. We're in the middle of something, but at the end of a matter. You won't suffer the fate of this harlot. It's not meant for you. This harlot will go through the plagues and the vengeance of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. They will. But it's not meant for you. You are counted as his own one of the elect. Never once do you hear the elect sitting with this woman who sits atop the beast. That's the part that got me. She sits atop the beast. No, no, a lot of people say, well, it's because uh, it's the city that's surrounded by the, the seven hills. Well, can I explain something to you? Seven heads, right? Or seven nations of where the horse sits. If you look into that literally, you may be thrown off. But if you look at that spiritually, she's fully adopted the ways and the practices of where she sits. But they do not like her. The attack, the battle that's coming, who is it against? The Christians. Is it not against the Christians? Does the world like Christians? Does ISIS like Christians? Who's getting slaughtered in the Middle East? Christians. They kind of ahead their own kind of, you know, they, they kind of give them respect. They do. Not a Christian. They don't give the Christians respect at all. All these stories about their letting them go, that's their pack of lies. They're a pack of lies. They're destroying every Christian that comes in their path. Even after they convert, they still behead them. All that stuff you hear on the news, a pack of lies. Our primary concern is that we abide in the words of Jesus Christ. If you don't, you stand against Him. And if you stand against him, and you were once with him, you're going to suffer the fate of the harlot. They will expose you, eat your flesh, and burn you. And you will be desolate. And in that practice of turning away from God, will be found tons of dragons. No one will inhabit that mindset anymore. And we just read it in Ezekiel. 
The Lord said, the heathen is going to know who he is. His people will not pollute his holy name anymore. He's going to put an end to all of it. And you know what? That makes you very special people. You know why? You've held on. You've held on. You, you, you've held on through the persecutions. You've held on through the backbiting. You've held on through a little bit of confusion. You've held on when the world began to fall apart because it's falling apart. You've held on. You've said in your heart, I'm going to serve the Lord. You will not share the fate of this harlot. And by the way, it's the mother of harlots. Can I submit something to you? The same people that caused Israel to go backwards, those same people exist today. The, those same people are embedded in just about every nation. You see, they have a pattern also. They tear a nation up from the inside out. They cause confusion and discord inside the nation. And then, as we read in the Bible, the pattern is this. Once a kingdom is divided against itself, the enemy takes it over. Isn't that something? We've heard that before. We've heard that before. God said a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. What do you see happening to America? It's not a good thing, but they're practicing Babylonian practices. I can assure you, America did not begin this way, but spies came along and corrupted the entire thing. I'm going to tell you a piece of Babylon you may not know about. You see, there's the Babylonian descriptions in the Bible, and there are real archaeological finds and real things that people had to put up with. Something that you absolutely feel right now, something very misguiding, something very deceptive. China deals with it also. In fact, the major nations are built atop something. Something's underneath the major nations. There's a reason why the capitals are placed where they are. And of course, you guys know me. I can't give mankind credit for knowing anything because all things are inspired by something. All things are. Something has influenced their knowledge into building the way that they did, into the placement of things. Something inspired them. And what eventually won over was not good. Who in the world is this woman that sits atop the beast? Now we're going to see parts of the beast that may not be too familiar with you, with you all. And the truth about some things, and you know what? You're absolutely starting to hear about this stuff. You're starting to hear about this stuff. Don't let the news that you hear coming out overwhelm you about the weird things in this world. Don't let them overwhelm you. Now, some will be lies. Some will be based in absolute truth. Don't let them overwhelm you. Remove the bias from your heart. The only bias we should have is that we love our neighbors as ourselves, that we do love our enemies, that we keep the attributes of Jesus Christ, that we continue to walk forward knowing we are in all security of our souls. You see, the real security is not your flesh. It's your soul. Because people's souls right now are in danger. There is an actual battle taking place right now to consume the souls of men. And for a while, it will appear that the enemy is winning. And then something wonderful is going to happen for us. Something horrible is going to happen for the inhabitants of the earth. Wonderful for us. Horrible for the inhabitants of the earth. Don't look for retribution. Don't walk through life saying, one day I'm going to be vindicated. But understand that your Savior is coming back for you. He's coming to establish himself here. Even the heathen will know, all people will know, that he is Lord. It's a done deal. You need not look for vindication from your family or anybody else. You see, because in the book of Jeremiah... And the relating scriptures are keys to what's going to happen to them. They will absolutely look around and look for anybody who has studied the word of God for an answer. They will not look within themselves, but they will not be able to find too many people. They will want someone to speak a scripture over them, because they themselves don't know any. You know, all these things are written in the Bible. Can you imagine people looking for someone to speak a word over them? Because everything else has failed them. And you know why it failed them? Because what they're going to be exposed to is absolutely supernatural. It's going to be beyond 
what they ever expected, what they ever anticipated, what they ever calculated. And it will come upon them as a thief in the night. It will come upon them. And their hearts are going to fail them for fear. And then the Lord will begin to destroy things with the brightness of his coming. The heavens will be made black. Part of it is because they went into the land of Israel. They went into the land of Israel. You see, there is a supernatural component, a great supernatural component. The God of heaven and earth, the God of all creation, is going to come here. He's going to come here. That can't be good for the earth because he's going to melt the mountains. The hills will melt. People are going to be burning up. But you'll be changed. Those things will not penetrate you. You'll have a new body. You'll be in a brand new body beyond description and the elements will no longer affect you as they affect the inhabitants of the earth but those who tore it with their salvation those who inwardly hated their brothers and sisters they're not going to be they're not going to be in a good in good shape because they fell prey to what's running here now most people think most people really do believe that this earth is governed by men they do it's governed by men you know, last night I gave you guys a hint and I told you that the United States was an Nephilim empire. Let me bring something to mind. You know when they were destroyed, the, first of all, the Lord says in the Bible, it said there were Nephilim before the flood and also after that, right? That's what it said. Did you notice in the Middle East, Joshua, all the armies were told to destroy the Nephilim that were over there. No one spoke of the Nephilim over here. Can I submit to you something today that they found sanctuary over here for a very, very long time. They all migrated to the United States, to Canada. All of them did to South America. This is why most of your strange and weird stories come from South America, North America, because they were all here. There are countless numbers of cities underneath your feet, empires, vast technological resources right below your feet. How many know that most of these sightings of other otherworldly things happen on the 37th parallel? Is it? Most everything happens on the 37th parallel. Most things happen on the 37th parallel. Even home sales are all messed up on the 37th parallel. Most paranormal activity happens on the 37th parallel. How many know that? Isn't that a weird fact? That's, that's very strange. There's a reason for that. The East Coast, number one, was laden with these ancient cities, catacombs. You know what? It was so funny because um, Heidi Bagley, one time in her broadcast, she, she I, I can't remember exactly what she said, but she said she, was, she had a dream or something of the catacombs underneath the East Coast. You guys remember that? She said she had a dream of those catacombs. I didn't want to say too much at the time. Now the facts are coming out. Underneath the East Coast and in places like New Orleans, Florida, yes, Florida, places like that, they're laden with ancient cities. The Grand Canyons and all these entry points to these cities have been cut off. And you know what they did? They, they, they found out something. They said, how do we stop people from venturing into these places? So the horror stories won't reach the world. Oh, we'll just declare them as government lands, natural preserves. We can take them over. Then we have the key. No one can build installations atop them. Because what they did was they made agreements with the inhabitants that were already here, folks. They were already here. And so later on, they began to make pacts with these things. Agreements, which is why presidents cry. Most of the presidents of the United States cry. Reagan, he cried too. In fact, there are memoirs that are coming out from uh, uh, other people that were in Hollywood that will tell of Reagan and his wife being very, just simply torn and ripped, ripped apart in their souls of something very real that happened to them. It would appear that those who go in these governing positions they're hiding much more than classified research. By the way, why in the world would you classify something that doesn't exist? Why? Why would you do that? They didn't classify Santa Claus. 
they classify Santa Claus. So why classify things that don't exist? Why do that? But I'm telling you something because America has been under the influence of these things for a very, very long time. You often, folks, you often hear me make a statement that when the church was flourishing, when it was flourishing in truth, the atmosphere of the nation changed. It began to change, but no one continued in that celebration. And the enemy sent spies out all over the place, spirits, demons. Don't give credit to people. They're not that smart. Demons began to operate again. You see, we've been in a war in America. It manifests in the physical. That's why we had slavery and all these other things. America was a, a great challenge. And the Lord did prepare this place before anybody got here. But we did not continue in his ways. See, when you don't continue in his ways and you have built a kingdom on top of hell itself, what happens when you forget about God? Hell begins to rise again. It's that simple. Nephilim kingdoms are all over the place in North America. This is why we have so many reports of the weird phenomena. They're not just made up things. Some of them are. Some of them. I, I'd say that uh, 90% are made up. But there are 10% that are real mysteries to the average person. 5% are so horrible, they wouldn't dare let that truth be told because it all boils down to a spiritual realm being real, flesh and blood. People have died encountering things here in the United States by flesh and blood things underneath the ground. And of course, we have underground bases, don't we? You see, it wasn't easy to establish underground bases. It was not easy at all. First thing they found out when they began to create these underground bases is that somebody did it already. Somebody did it, and somebody had the upkeep on these places. And I'm telling you now, they're not very friendly to humans, to mankind. Demons are not friendly to humans. Number one, they never want to be found out, displayed, made known, or anything else before the time, whatever that means. They want to remain hidden and secret. They do not wish to uh, socialize or anything else. Why? Because they're evil. They absolutely cannot stand you. Most of our policies have been to pacify Christians, but never fully let the words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ govern anything. If you look carefully into history, you're going to find that early on, they silenced the authority of Jesus Christ in this nation. After a time, they did. They silenced that authority. They come up with very deceptive plans. They don't care how many lives it costs. But they come up with deceptive plans to keep your attention away from the truth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Which is, He is Lord. That simple truth. They keep you bamboozled. You begin to look at topics like protests. More and more of us need to understand that demons are real. How many times have you guys, you know what, it was, it was displayed to us. Clear as a bell. People began to eat people, right? You guys remember that? You guys remember that? Let's use our memories. What happened to most of those people after they were questioned? What did they say? Well, I don't remember. I don't remember eating my own child. I don't remember that. I, I really don't remember. Engineers in college, young engineers in college eating their roommates. Why did you do that? Oh, I, I don't remember. Look in his record, no previous drug usage. They tried to blame it on a drug, but the majority of the people who exercised or committed these crimes, these horrible acts, had no drugs in their system. So what was it? What makes a person go from being an engineer, being enthusiastic about his or her career, to eating their roommate? Demonic activity. What do you see in Oklahoma? What was just made known to the entire world in Oklahoma? Satan's church, which has already been here, right? It's already been here. But let me tell you something. If a person is not covered by the blood of the Lamb, and if a demon finds compatibility, it's going to uh, do its thing. And it's purposeful. It's never just to do it. It's purposeful. Even the demons in the Bible did things that were purposeful. They're purposeful, folks. Something is being set up right underneath your noses. There's a kingdom that's already in existence. Satan already has a power, seat, and great authority. He gives the beast that power. 
by the way, he already had the power. Where do you have the power at? Right here. He had a power, seat, great authority. He's governing so many things, he's going to hand it right over to the beast. And what did it say? The world worshipped the dragon, which gave power to the beast, and they worshipped the beast. Now, here's what gets me. How did they worship the dragon? We talked about this last week. You worship the dragon by worshiping the things of the dragon. People here, people in this world, they celebrate things that Satan has created in the earth or manipulated in the earth. Systems he has put together. How many know that you never read about getting a job in eternity? You know why? The monetary system was created by the fallen. There's an entire story about the monetary system. There's a lot of philosophy that goes behind the governing of people. Did you know that? Back in the day in Deuteronomy and Exodus, their crops and things were their uh, substance, right? So they could barter with one another. Not so they could pay taxes, so they could barter with one another. And the Lord said, if you can't make it to the place where God chooses to place his name there, take what you have, bind it up in currency, and bring it to the place, have someone bring it to the place where God chooses to place his name there. And then you know what the Levites did? They took all of what they had and they gave it back out to the people and they had a feast. That's what they did. And then the Levites got in trouble. You know why? Because they kept keeping too much. They had to live under the same standard formed in the Exodus, which is that God provides for them. The Lord told them not to take excess of what the people had but store it up until the next time everything was faith-based. But the Levites gathered what they had and they gave it back out to the people. They didn't keep it and go get these huge wagons. Right? They didn't do that. That's not what they did. They didn't do it. They didn't do it. They gave it back out to the people. And there were seven tithes, not just one. Seven. You see, all those things should be in our hearts. It really should be. Somehow it's been lost. The Lord didn't desire his people to suffer. But I can tell you this, through the ways of old being lost, and the corruption of Israel, the world has been corrupted. In fact, the kings of the earth waxed rich through her abominations. I can tell you that. How can any one king make the nations rich through her abominations, you ask? Well, I'll tell you. Had they kept God's ways, Satan would have been kept under subjection. Why? Because the Lord said he would have utterly done away with her enemies. Anything that would have opposed his way established in the earth, he would have put down. But because they turned their backs, they let the enemy run wild. Do you see a pattern here? If you don't keep the ways of the Lord, if you don't let the words of Jesus Christ abide in your life, you're giving Satan a free pass. That's what you're doing. How do you think this nation was lost? Because we became passive. Not passive in the way that you may think either. You see, we become passive. We see iniquity abounding. We see people do bad stuff. We hear, we get into conversations that people commit fornication and everything else. And guess what we do? We do nothing. Let me tell you how serious it is. People come to you in these predicaments. And because it's so hard to deal with, you know what we say? Oh, I can't fool with that right now. Next day comes another situation. You know what we say? I can't deal with that right now. It's the same thing that Israel did. It's the same thing they did. Same thing they did. Right? Same thing they did. Thank God for Jesus Christ, who has redeemed us. He paid the price in full. And we had a high price. Believe me. Right now in America, we've done the same thing. This nation is in the state it's in because we failed to uphold his standards. You know what happened? We were distracted, folks. Distracted in technology. Distracted with toys. Distracted with the ideas of coming rich and famous and whatever it was. We became distracted. Now, you're telling me that that, too, was not orchestrated. That was a device of the enemy. You see, the enemy can't get you head on. So he uses systems, puzzle pieces, chess games, and everything else to subdue your life, to make you do nothing. Because every day he can make you do nothing is a day he can prosper in his plans. 
Every day you do nothing is the day he can prosper in his plans. And then we all wake up one day and say, oh, my Lord, this world is corrupted. Yes, because we went to sleep. Just like those virgins. All of them were sleeping. They fell asleep. There's no way Satan can prosper if we're all awake. He can't prosper. He can't. He would run from one nation to the other. He'd, in, here in America, if the Word of God were absolutely alive in every aspect of our lives, in, with everybody we came in contact with, he would, he, would, he would get so tired of running, he said, uh, I'm not going back to the United States. That's what would happen to him. He'd be pressed into a corner, forced to leave. But we all fell asleep. We fell asleep. We began to enjoy his delicacies. And we relaxed. You see, we have this curious nature. Only with pressure, only with great pressure, do we ever hope to wake up and begin to consider everything. You see, that's what happened. We woke up and we began to consider these things. And we don't like what we see. And although it may have been purposed, although it may be prophecy, we still fell asleep. Thank God for Jesus Christ. All those who trust in their own ways, they fell asleep too. Some of them are sleeping while they're walking. I call those zombies. If you're walking and sleeping at the same time, you're a zombie. What are you good for? Nothing. You're a zombie. Thank God for Jesus Christ. The same thing happened in Israel. When you go back and you study their culture and what they were doing at that time, they had it so good they didn't need to be obedient. Why? Because they had it so good. And when they found out they paid no instant penalty for the wrongdoings, the wrongdoings increased. See, when we don't have to pay for something, we go back and get more. Don't believe me? You ever see free samples in a store? Take a soda machine, stick it in the middle of a city, and tell everybody it's broken. You just press a button and, you know, it gives you a free soda. Everybody's going to empty that soda machine out in 30 seconds. Because if something, if we pay no price for something, we go back and get more. We do. We go back and get more. This is what happens in the book of Jeremiah. They paid no instant penalty. Then you have one of the prophets. Then, then the, what made me chuckle was this. What made me chuckle was this. Jeremiah 4.10 made me chuckle. Because I'm sitting here reading, and I'm saying, wow, they, they defiled the land. They ruined his, his heritage. And then the prophet Jeremiah says, he says, surely. Thou hast greatly deceived this people and Jerusalem, saying, You shall have peace, <laughs> whereas the sword reaches unto our soul. Why? Because they were about to be exiled. They got away with so much. The Lord was so lenient, allowing them to grow up, but they did not continue practicing his ways. They began to practice everybody else's ways. They began to resurrect the worship of Egypt in the land of Israel. They defiled it. Which means, and what's, here's the sad part, folks. They read all the good stuff, all the promises, right? This is why Jeremiah said this. This is why it was allowed to be spoken. It was allowed, it was inspired to be written. They read all the good stuff and forgot about the bad stuff. They forgot there was a price to pay. Sure, they would have had peace if they would have hearkened to the voice of the Lord and not turned their back. Sure, they would have had peace. But ever since they did that, through every exile, they did the same thing over and over again. You know what's happened today? They were bought back, right? They were bought back to their lands. You see, they've been bought back before. They went there from Egypt. They went back from, uh, from Babylon. They were there in the time of Christ. How was it then? How was it then? They were in their land, but how was it then? You had the Sadducees and Pharisees ruling Israel. You know what they were doing? They were committing fornication with Rome. Do you know why? They were appeasing Rome. They were pleasing Rome, and they rejected God. Everything they did was to keep themselves alive. They did not turn to God. They turned to Rome. And in doing so, because they paid no instant penalty they could see, they turned his house of worship into a den of thieves. In other words, they defiled it again. Then, of course, in our time, in the history that we can see, a great many things happened. Because they lost the temple again. But then in our time, the Holocaust happened. 
And that, too, was written in the Bible. If people would examine all they had to do, and my grandmother told me they were given warning. And you know what? They didn't believe the scriptures. They said, oh, no, the Talmud says, the Talmud says this. They didn't read the scriptures. They didn't want to hear any harm. Listen, they didn't want to hear any scripture against anything. Just like the Lord will tell us. Just like the Lord will tell us. If you go around hating your brother, you're a murderer. Nobody wants to hear that. Just like the Lord tells us. No liar is going to enter, is going to tarry in God's sight. We don't want to hear it. We don't want to hear that. Just like Israel did not want to hear the bad things that would happen to them if they did not hearken unto the voice of the Lord. And you know what's happening right now? They accept the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. But they do not want to listen to the words that he said. They want to make up a new way. Fornicators. They're fornicating. They're mixing his words with other stuff. You can't do that. You, that's not pure. That's tainted. And again, that same Babylonian spirit, that same backbiting, turn your back on God's spirit still lingers today. Now you see why there's a harlot. That harlot constitutes quite a few people, quite a few nations. That harlot is a harlot for a reason. It is the original spirit, the original acts of Israel, because they were the first ones that did it. They were the first ones God referred to as a harlot in the first place. They were. They were the first ones that God referred to them as, as committing fornication with everybody else. And when they went to Babylon, that's why God said, Oh, I sent them to Babylon. I'm going to paraphrase. To correct them. And yet, you just, you just ruined them and made my heart heavy. And then when you look and you try to understand that, you realize they began to prosper in Babylon. They turned totally away from... You know what they did? They mixed God's words with Sumerian God's words. And then they came up with one single thing. That's why some of the holidays were changed. But it didn't constitute the people because some of them made, made honest statements that they were in darkness while they were there. You see, some of them understood. They said they were in darkness. They didn't like being there. The statement was, God placed me in darkness. That was a statement. God placed me in darkness. That's in uh, Lamentations 3.6. God placed me in darkness. And it's referring to the Babylonian Talmud. Babylonian Talmud. So it gets real it, it gets real mixed up after this, but if you can understand the broad the breadth and scope of both Babylon and this woman that sits atop the beast, it'll make you think twice about taking anything God has given to us for granted. We see the fate of this woman. We see the fate of Babylon. We know that he called Jerusalem old daughter of Babylon. When she went there and came back, he called her old daughter of Babylon. O virgin daughter. Practicing what they practice. Mixing my words with strange words. We see that. We see Daniel when they were exiled there. We see Daniel praying for them. Praying for them. Why was he praying for them? Because he knew they were corrupt. He was sick to his stomach with what his people were doing. Daniel was. How many know that? Daniel was sick to his stomach for what his people were doing. For what Israel did, he was sick to his stomach. Sick to his stomach for what Israel did. And he prayed for them. And then the Lord showed him what was going to happen to his people at the end of days. He told him what was to become of his people. That was the answer to his prayer. Then we're shown quite a few things which made him real sick. He got real sick after that. But God promised that he was going to cause Israel to stop playing the harlot and to give no hire anymore. That's Ezekiel 41, last statement in there. He promised he was going to stop her from doing that. And then his fury will be at rest with her. But that's at the end of days. It's at the end of days. And you can't lump them all in with the same... You, know, you can't lip them in, lump them in with that toxic soup. That means those who are defiled... You see, Israel was defiled from the inside, folks. She's defiled from the inside. In the same way, you do not 
reflect upon the White House, nor does the White House reflect upon you, nor do God's people that are in Israel reflect upon what's happening inside of Israel. That's why he said, come out of her, my people. Why were his people in Babylon in the first place? Well, you have to continue to study Jeremiah, Daniel, Ezekiel, reference Revelation, even the New Testament to find out what was happening there. His people are all in Babylon. Babylon has become broad. It has a scope far-reaching because of its spiritual nature, because of the mindset. And then you have these wolves in sheep's clothing. They constitute the whore, the whore Babylon. They are mystery Babylon walking around. They're grafted into her. We're grafted into the branch. They are grafted into her. I know it's so bad. This woman is going to be torn to pieces by the beast. And then the beast in his kingdom is going to be torn to pieces and utterly destroyed by our Father in heaven. So the beast will destroy the woman because she's trampled underfoot for 40 and two months. By the way, the harlot is also trampled underfoot. Now when it comes to being trampled underfoot, there's already a, a uh, God already foretold that Israel would be trampled underfoot for 40 and two months. But we're grafted into the branch of Israel, aren't we? We're grafted into the branch. We're God's people. Jews are not Jews just outwardly, but internally. We are his people. The Lord's going to purge his vineyard. But I thank God for his son, Jesus Christ, because those of us who reside under the blood of the Lamb are not going to be partakers back to the United States. So we live in a land within the land, right? We come here to the United States. These stains were underneath us, but they couldn't come up. They could not come up because of the barrier. You don't have to believe me, but you're going to see it with your own eyes. They couldn't come up because of the barrier of believers. You see, normally when something first begins, everybody has a good intent. Everybody's hearts are in the right place when it first begins. Over time, with a little freedom and with a few spies, perversion steps in. A corruptness sets in. And when it did set in, murders began to happen people, entire races were rejected. First the Irish then the African Americans uh, just terrible things for no reason why go all the way across the sea to get slaves what all you have to do is ask the person who lives next to you hey let's employ some people to do this no, it was said that the spirit of Nero entered America, no one talks about these stories, the spirit of Nero, you see everybody wanted to be their own king and their own queen in fact, that same spirit operates today in America. That same spirit operates today. You can't follow the words of God and be your own king or queen. It won't work. And a lot of people wrote down that the spirit of Nero crept into this nation. So oppression began. The blood of innocence was spilled in this land. What did that do to this land at that time? It defiled it. The, the, the blood of the oppressed will always defile a land. The Lord said, don't ever let that happen. But he got mad at his own people. He was upset with his own people. He said, because this happened in your quarters. The blood of the oppressed is in your quarters. In other words, in the other parts of your land. It's in the outer parts of your land. Right? Different portions of your land. The, the blood of the oppressed is there. And sure enough, they were adopting and practicing the ways of Egypt, the ways of Rome. Anybody who passed by and had something interesting to say, a new philosophy, they seem to have taken it in. If you turn your back on the Father, you will adopt the ways of anybody who passes by. You will. You will adopt it. That's what happens here. You see, there's no way we could be absolutely blessed in any of this stuff that's in the United States continue. That, that would be impossible. The blessing itself from people being standing upright would cause Satan to go to... He, he'd have to go somewhere else. He would. He'd have to go somewhere else. So you know what? Now we have two Babylons, don't we? We did the same thing Israel did. We did the exact same thing that Israel did. A land was prepared for us. 
the Lord blessed us. The enemy came to try and put it back under a monarchy, and it was defeated. Then we had a few years of freedom. And then guess what? Satan crept in. Nobody ever tells the stories about the Grecian philosophers and people who were steeped in philosophy and other religions and this, that, and the other. Started creeping. Even the Indians had... Listen, the Indians had the founding fathers paying homage to the creator woman, their deity. Certain factions of Indians believed in a woman. They had statues of her. And do you not know that they made a statue of this woman that still exists today? I'm not going to tell you where she is, but you've seen it. This woman still exists today, and it is not the Statue of Liberty. But this is an Indian god. It was said that she fell to earth, and a turtle rose up and caught her. That turtle was the land. And then the woman sprinkled seeds over the turtle's back and crops and things grew. The turtle is North America. And they had a picture of it too. So obviously they, somebody showed them North America from the satellite or something. It's the fallen angels. Fallen angels. They made an idol to this thing and paid homage to it. You can't have an idol sitting in a place where you're worshiping the Lord your God. You cannot found a nation on God's word and then retract it. There's a penalty. We did the same thing Israel did. And wouldn't you know it? We did. We invited people into this country and said, hey, you can have freedom here. And then we adopted their religions. Now we have them all lumped in together. And we've been fighting over who has religion rights and everything else here. You know? And now what are we saying now? Worship what you want. Be what you want. Now we become almost a wholly owned subsidiary of Babylon. Oh, and by the way, we practice sorceries, witchcraft. We don't trust anything unless the scientists say it. They had scientists in Babylon. They had astrologers in Babylon. NASA, there are astrologers. If something happens in the heavens, who do you go and check with? NASA, right? We say we don't like them, but we go check with them anyway. Astrologers, scientists, soothsayers. Oh, you say we don't have soothsayers? Hmm? Those who those who divide the future and all this other stuff, right? Do you know how many presidents have psychics on their payroll? Do you know how many people in Washington, how many people in leadership positions consult psychics? Do you not know that the CIA, the FBI, they use psychics? Hmm? They practice witchcraft. What do you think remote viewing is? You think that's just a science? No, that's tapping into forces. We shouldn't. We should have relied on the creator of this world. Now that we didn't and have fully have turned our backs, and now we won't even allow the name of Jesus Christ to be spoken. In the capital that was given to us through the grace of God, what do you think that is? And you know why all this stuff happened, by the way? We fell asleep. We kept saying to ourselves, you know, it'll get better in time. They just, no, no, it's not. We fell asleep. We did not stand with integrity and say, no, sir. No, sir, it doesn't work like that. You better repent. We didn't have people in masses saying, repent. You see, we have no excuse these days. We have the Holy Spirit. We should have a collective voice telling everybody in leadership. You better repent now or pay the penalty according to the Word of God. Yes, the Word of God is real. Cast down your imaginations while you still have life. For the Lord will plunge you and your nation in darkness, and He will deliver us. That's going to return, by the way. A collective voice, not from one person, but a collective voice. It's already written. A collective voice will speak and declare. A collective voice will speak and declare. We fell asleep. You know, guys, I was wondering. In the book of Revelation, it says there will be a, every island and mountain will be moved out of its place, right? You guys know it's not going to happen from an internal force. I don't think it will be. I can speculate. I'm not sure. Because it does not say it's going to happen externally or internally. But I do not believe it's from an internal force. Let me turn my volume up here. Can you guys hear me a little bit uh, better now? Hopefully. Good to go? Good to go? Hopefully. It's not going to happen internally. I don't believe it's going to happen internally. 
You know what I believe? I believe that something so frightening will come upon the face of this earth for those who are not covered in the blood of the Lamb, for those who are still here. I do. Because I'll make this statement. I'll make this statement. Are you ready for this statement? We are not appointed to His wrath. And if everything is burning up and melting and everything else, it's part of the judgment. Because everything is burned up right before He judges everything. Destruction, destruction on destruction will be upon the face of this earth. It's not appointed to us. We have to be in a different form. If you're under the blood of the Lamb now, now I need to make I need to bring out a very important point. And this is why it's so very important for people not to play with their salvation. You know, playing like they're okay and everything else. They shouldn't do that. By the way, it's in the book of Jeremiah. Go figure. Go figure it's in the book of Jeremiah. But there was a point in time when they saw the destruction coming. That they made them they, they it says that she made herself fair. She put on adornments. She put on her gold and silver and decked herself out. She saw the trouble coming, and when she saw the trouble coming, guess what she did? No one would help her. Can you imagine seeing the destroyer coming back? It, you know what? It reminds me of the virgins. It really does. They all woke up. Some were prepared, five were prepared, five were foolish, and were not prepared. Because if you don't have oil, you must have fallen asleep, not thinking about the oil. You see, because... They didn't make the proper preparations. Even though they were in a time of sleep, they had no intention of anything coming to pass. They didn't. Now listen, the only way you can be caught unawares is if you don't really think it's going to happen. Because if you think something is going to happen, you're not going to be caught unaware. But if you don't really think it's going to happen, and you know, it could be a mythical story and this, that, and the other, you're going to be caught off guard. As they stay in Texas, you're going to be caught with your britches down. And then you're going to be in real trouble. You're going to be in real trouble. This is what Israel is. You know what? God declared Israel would do the same thing. She'd do the same thing. you got to ask yourself, why in the world is, is the Lord so harsh on Israel? Why? Because she was the first fruits. That's why. She was the standard bearer. Through her, the word of God went throughout the whole earth. Through her, this world could have been repaired. But because she messed up, she caused Satan to prosper. That's what she did. She caused Satan to prosper. She did not hold up the standard that was first given to her. Kind of like what America's doing now. America's messing up from the inside out. As a result of America losing her place, what's happening to the rest of the world? Chaos. You know, there was a time... When we could call up a nation and say, listen, you need to fix this. Or we're going to hammer you hard if you don't. You need to fix this. And you didn't hear anything from that nation. All of a sudden, they fixed their problem. Right? Not now. Because they won't answer the phone. Don't believe me? Putin didn't answer the phone. They called Russia. Russia wouldn't take their phone calls. You know what that means? They don't see us as a standard bearer anymore. We can barely call Africa. If they didn't have problems with the Ebola virus, they'd probably hang up the phone on us too. Saudi Arabia hangs up the phone all the time. Iran hangs up the phone. We look like a foolish nation who fights internally, distracted, and can't solve anything in our own country. Therefore, we have no voice outside. This is why Egypt went crazy. They took advantage of it. Of course, we have our operatives doing this, that, and the other. It's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the relational aspect of our country to Israel. It's so incredibly alike. We share many attributes to Israel in their rebellious state. And we all know what happened to them, don't we? That's why the Lord said, Come out of her, my people, that do not partake of her place. Now, what does that actually mean? Come out of her, my people. Didn't Jesus? Jesus told us what that meant. He told us what it meant. He told us exactly what that meant. Did it mean pack up your bags and leave? That's not what it meant. If you're part of this woman, if you're part of that woman riding atop the beast, you will have the same plagues as she has. Your fate will be the same as hers. If you're holding on to this world, thinking that your answers are in the world, 
you're holding on to the harlot who once having the word of God turned her back on it in full who fornicated with every other belief she's a combination of all religions she's a combination of all philosophies she does not depend on God but she has looked into her own beauty the Lord said come out of her my people they do not partake of her plagues come out come out of her and you know what so many people now they still have fully adopted a fallen the fallen nations plural never really anticipating the rising of a system so horrible that it will subdue all the others may I remind you the ten kings right that are with the beast it says in the Bible they have no kingdoms as of yet but will one hour with the beast they're not appointed as kings yet they're not public figures yet they're not the presidents of countries yet but they will one hour with the beast that term one hour means one season with the beast one season with the beast one season I'm going to equate it to one season because it says a lot of stuff but one season with the beast they're going to have power and they're going to hand their power over to the beast so while everybody else is busy trying to really point out this man of perdition we need to remember that man of perdition is going to be revealed we're going to know who he is because we can't go anywhere until that happens we're not going to go anywhere let's there come a great falling away first we see that happening it's just not happening like we thought we thought it was going to be obvious something that uh, you know could easily be fixed no don't 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 just give up on God and do this that and the other but what they're doing is this if you fall away from the faith they're falling away just like those people did when they went to Babylon they adopted something new mixing it in with the wine they were giving they were mixing in caramel caramel with wine that doesn't mix let alone the old wine and the new wine but they're mixing in some other strange drink strange substance with the wine and that's something if you mingle yourselves with something and and mix it in with the Word of God you become whatever you have mixed in with in other words you're gonna become the daughter of the very thing you fornicated with you're gonna become the thing the very thing you fornicate with is gonna become a part of you when you mix your Christianity given by the holy words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and you mix that with the philosophies of men you've done a bad deed you fornicated the worst way and if it continues you're going to be a partaker of the harlots and Babylon's faith the Lord said come out of her my people that you do not partake of her plagues this doesn't mean pack up and move but that means get your life right let the words of your Lord abide in you let his words only abide in you he called you out of the world he did he called you out of the world he didn't call you out of the world so you could be a part of the world again that's not what he did the world does not like you how many of you know that the world just just not accept you your ideas though sometimes they make you know they're good but in, in, in essence you've been booted out of the world they can spot you out of a thousand people and they say you're not like one of us you go over there they've abandoned you they've already identified you and like Jesus said they didn't know me the world didn't know me so they're not going to know you either and if they don't know you they will not embrace you you're only going to embrace their own that makes you very special people that's something to celebrate about most people look at that as oh woe is me the world has rejected me I say goody goody gumdrops you guys are supposed to laugh on that one I made a joke you're supposed to say goody goody gumdrops they've rejected me that is awesome because I stand with the Lord the world did not know the Lord and they rejected him too they hated him and they rejected me too not because of what you're saying not because of what you said not because of how you act or anything else it's something in you that repels the world away from you you can never fit into the world why do you think that the, the harlot couldn't fit into the world either that's why the beast of which she rides is going to destroy her the beast destroys her never once did it say God destroys the harlot it's not what it says in Revelation it said the beast did that the beast didn't like her yet she's riding on the thing 
with her scarlet, purple and scarlet. You know, scarlet is often used. The Lord said, though your sins be as scarlet. Uh-oh, it's another key phrase. You see, I look at the words of the Lord and I say, wait a minute, Lord. You're, you're a God of purpose, a God of order. So everything you inspire to be written has to mean something. And so you go look up the original text and you're astounded. That is the same word used. And then you see it again. Scarlet, sin, scarlet, sin, scarlet, sin. And what is the woman wearing on top of the beast? What is she wearing? Is, is she not in the same attire, clothed of sin and shiny stuff? Our Lord's amazing. We, we just have to study and do our due diligence. Look through His Word, not having a preconceived notion, not being biased, but say, Lord, speak to me. I want to understand. Because the Lord said, He'll withhold no wisdom from him who asks for it. If you ask for wisdom, He's not going to withhold it. He's not. You can't ask for wisdom and then amazingly think you're going to get the words of the Bible without having opening. That's not going to happen. You're going to have to give 100%. See, the problem is... We put our hearts into something, folks. But what are we putting our hearts, what are we putting our efforts into? Because whatever you put your efforts into, that's what's going to grow in your life. We're going to put it somewhere. But we're learning a lesson. Thank God for Jeremiah. Thank God for the book of Jeremiah. And the rest of the books as well. But we just so, just so happens we're studying the book of Jeremiah. Even in Jeremiah 5, 9, the Lord said, I'm going to avenge myself upon this nation. Huh? What's that mean? In the book of Jeremiah, it says that they, they it, it gave a prophecy how they just killed their prophets with the sword. In her was found the blood of the prophets. But then it says something strange, and all that was slain upon the earth. That's called blame. You know what? No one would have died. There's another scripture. There's another scripture that says death would really not be on this earth if his people would have stood for his word. All that were slain upon the earth means something. It doesn't mean, you know why? Because a curse went forth because of Israel. A curse went forth because of Israel. To the earth, to the earth, a curse did go forth. Again, because of Israel. And because she refused to hold up the standards that were given to her first. Given to her first, the first fruits, the first fruits. Soul puppet, the first fruits. See what soul puppet wrote? The first fruits. Didn't we read that? She was the first fruits? But she defiled the land. Defiled the land. And now the nations. The nations. And you have to uh, ask just like uh, Jeremiah 51 7 with Soul Puppet put up there. They made the whole world drink of the wine of wrath of her fornication. The wine of wrath of her fornication. Now, you know what I thought about that phrase? The wine of wrath of her fornication, which means this. God was angry because of what somebody did. Now, God's anger was initially, according to Jeremiah, with who? His own people. And he said that wouldn't be turned away. The only way that's going to be pacified is when his indignation is complete. But then what did he say in the book of Ezekiel? That the entire world was under his wrath. And still, it will only be pacified when his indignation is complete. Well, what's the root of his indignation? What is the root of his anger? His own people, who effectively broke his heart. We read that too in Jeremiah. His own people. Long time ago, his own people who effectively broke his heart. And so all this time has been going on and on and on and on. On and on and on and on. Because God said in Jeremiah, what was it, Jeremiah chapter 3, my bowels, my bowels, that, that's a bad pain, you know, that's a bad heartbreak, that's heartbreak pain. Because why? Jerusalem and Judah dealt treacherously. He was her husband. He was her husband and she dealt treacherously with him. Treacherously. And it hurt him. Him. And now, through them, wrath has gone out into the entire earth. Then he said something curious. In 4.16, making mention to the nations, behold, publish against Jerusalem. Not against anybody else, 
right? Make you mention to the nations, to the nations, by the way, behold, publish against Jerusalem that watchers come from a far country and give us a voice against the cities of Judah. As keepers of a field are they against her round about, because she hath been rebellious against me, saith the Lord. So it was pretty bad what they did. Pretty bad. But not what a few independent people did. But here it is. When you walk in rebellion, you invite Satan into your camp, period. If you walk in rebellion, you invite Satan in your camp. Any room of rebellion invites Satan into your camp. That includes us for our households. Are we under grace and mercy? Yes, we are. But none of us can ever deny that when we turn away from the Lord, the smallest matters, Satan comes right into our homes, our situation. Doesn't he? Doesn't he do that? that and, and the Lord permits that so we can learn it's not for our destruction. He can't destroy us because we belong to the Lord, but he can certainly be used to put lumps on us. When he walks in, we straighten up. We say, oh boy, something is messed up here. Let me sit up straight. Because if Satan does not step... Listen, if you never faced a trial or tribulation, you know what would happen to you? You'd go to sleep. Anybody ever been sleep at night, right? You get a phone call. It's not a good one. And you raise up right in your bed. You're getting up on your feet. You're trying to figure this thing out. Well, it woke you up, didn't it? All of a sudden, everything that you put off now becomes important. And you're, 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 you're back to business. Oh, I got to get this done. I got to get this done. Kind of reminds me of combat. You folks that have been in combat. Everybody's around, you know, you're around a foxhole, bunker, whatever you're doing around the CP, command center, whatever you say. Everybody's, you know, they're eating their MREs and talking and, and discussing and doing this, that, and the other. And all of a sudden, you begin to hear artillery shells or an aircraft that you can hear the jet engines are not U.S. jet engines. All of a sudden, you snap to it. You're like, oh, I'm back to business. Well, that happens in your life, too. It's also going to happen to the inhabitants of the earth. See, if the enemy was never here, all of us would we'd just be asleep. No alarm clock. Satan is our alarm clock. That's, you know what? That's why it was written. I think that's why it was written. All things work together for the good of them that love the Lord who are called according to his purpose. Do you know why? Because even when Satan attacks you, it can be used for your good. Even when Satan runs amok in your situation, you're growing and learning and you certainly woke up. You know what that means? He cannot overtake you because you belong to the Lord. Is he going to operate? Yes, he is. He's going to operate. His imps are going to operate. They're going to operate. The Lord does not desire to lose any of us. In fact, Jesus said, the Father gave me you and no man can pluck you out of my hand. He certainly can't pluck you out of the Father's hands. And he also said, Jesus also said in the book of John, it is God's will that Jesus not lose any of us. That's what God's will is for him. The only way you can be lost is if you turn your back on the Lord. If you become a Nathan, you become a Nathan, and you sell out your own people, and you become a worker of the wolf, you become a wolf yourself. You're now an agent of Satan. Well, you're going to do your damage here on the earth, but you're still not going to be effective. You're not going to be effective. It's not going to work. But I'll tell you this, Satan can only draw out of men what he has invested in them. And you know what the Lord told us to die to our flesh daily? You know why? Because in your flesh are the desires of this world. And the more you die to your flesh, the less Satan has to hold on to. In fact, it was written, a man is drawn away and tempted of his own lust. If it's not within you, it can never be used against you. So if you walk out there and say, well, I was tempted to do this, that, and the other, that means it still resides in you. That's the time to go to your prayer closet and say, oh, Lord, look, I found something. Satan found something in me. Remove it. He's got to handle. He's got to handle. Remove it. See how that works? Ask the Lord sincerely instead of uh, fighting about it hiding it and all this that it'll bring it straight to the Father in truth and say Lord remove this because you said a man is drawn away and tempted of his own lust now, I was tempted today which means it resides within me Satan cannot tempt any of us he can't tempt any of us to freeze ourselves to death right no, not one of us is going to go into a deep freezer and tell somebody to shut the door and lock it 
We're not going to do that. That would be just absolutely ludicrous. You know why? Because we don't want to freeze to death, do we? We don't want to freeze to death. So that temptation will never work on us. And first of all, Satan has to know what your temptations are to utilize them. That means he is spies in your life. And if he has spies in your life, they're watching you all the time. And they're waiting on a weakness to be exposed. And we tell him everything he needs to know. Because we get on the phone and we mumble to ourselves, Oh, I just can't stand this person. Right? And the, and the more you talk, the more ammunition the dark side gets. And they'll say, well, we're going to use that against her next time. Somebody calls you on the phone, you lose your composure and everything else, and they're happy. They're like, yes, that worked. We're going to use this next time. Because we show Satan everything he needs to know. He can't read our minds, but he can absolutely send his agents out to watch everything that you do. And we tell them everything. Right? So don't do that. Anyway, back to the subject. We see an example in the book of Jeremiah. Of a great many things. These are nuggets of nuggets in the book of Jeremiah. These are nuggets of nuggets in the book of Jeremiah. Some of you are called by the Lord to do some things. But you know what? Here's the fact. You're scared. You're thinking, all right, well, I'm not equipped to do this. I need to learn more to do this. Can I, can I tell you something? The Lord said, whom he called, he also qualifies. You're just like Jeremiah. You're just like Jeremiah. He called Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, well, I'm, I'm a child. He said, don't say that. The Lord touched his mouth. Touched his mouth. And he said, you're going to go tell these people this, that, and the other. And then the Lord said, for behold, I have made thee this day a defensed city. He put the armor on you. And an iron pillar you can't be knocked over. And a brazing walls against the whole land. Whatever mission he sends you on, you can't be defeated. And against the kings of Judah, and against the princes thereof, and against the priests thereof, and against the people of the land. Whoever he sends you out to, though they may be against you, though they may have titles or no titles, whoever they may be, you're prepared for it. And guess what? It says, then it says, Jeremiah 119, and they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee, for I am with thee, saith the Lord, to deliver thee. Now, if you know this, and if you know the Lord saith whom he called, he also qualifies now. If you weren't protected, Satan would have snuffed you out a long time ago. Why? Because he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. That means Satan can't get to you, folks. So don't think he can. Stop thinking he can get to you. Start saying yes to the Lord. Don't worry about anything else. He said, I send you sheep among wolves. I love that term, sheep. You know why? It, it, it's kind of humble and meekness. But if you're sheep among wolves and you defeat them, what does that make you? Something more powerful than that wolf is. That's what it makes you. Don't sit back in the seat of defeat. Oh, I'm too tired. I can't encourage your soul. Understand that your God is the God. You see, when I read scripture, I start to find out who my father is. And I get absolutely excited. I do. I get, or I get, I get so excited I can't concentrate sometimes. And I say, oh, wait a minute. Oh, let me sit down. Let me sit down. I get excited. Sometimes I'll start crying. Don't tell everybody, folks. Don't tell everybody. But sometimes certain things hit my heart so deeply, right? I have no other choice but to fall to my knees and say, Thank you, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. When I say, Thank you, Lord Jesus, it's just not a repetitious word that I use. Because when I say that word, Jesus, and when I hear other people use it, it does something to me internally. You see, because the memory of what he did by what I've read comes back to me. And I hold on to that with everything that I am, and I will never let go, nor will I forget. I'm not worthy to walk in my own shoes, but the Lord saw fit that I did. I'm not capable of conducting what I have conducted, but the Lord saw fit that I did for his glory, for his purposes. Not so that I could be this shining figure in the profession that I'm in, because I despise my profession, but I've reached a lot of people that probably would not have been reached. Although if I couldn't do it, he would have sent somebody else. So I'm thankful. He put me right where he needed me. And I'm just now starting to understand the fullness of that. It's very difficult to understand sometimes. I don't argue with him either. As though I know everything and he doesn't. I do not. Now when I see his word and I need it to work in somebody's life and all the requirements are met and I do go search diligently to make sure those requirements are met. Well, then that's a different story. I said, wait a minute, Lord. Now you said you would do this 
if they did this, and I don't see it. Oh, and by the way, did I tell you, you said other men would witness it? See, when you do that, you know what you're doing? You're exercising your faith, because how can you talk to something you can't see? How can you make a demand of something that you can't see? That's faith. And what did it say in the Word of God? It is impossible to please God without faith. So when you actually do utilize your faith, what does that mean? You're pleasing God. And if you please God, you're in a good position with Him at that moment. I just love Him. I do love Him. And I think the Word of Jeremiah is rich. I think it's rich. Oh, let me read something to you, Jeremiah 6.14. They have healed all... Uh, let me read the whole thing. i got to do it. i got to do it, folks. i got to do it. Because I need to identify something being said right now. I need to do it. Here it is. Jeremiah 16. To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Behold, their ear is uncircumcised, and they cannot hearken. Behold, the word of the Lord is unto them of reproach. They have done no delight in it. Therefore, I am full of fury. I'm full of the fury of the Lord. I am weary with holding in. I will pour it out upon the children abroad and upon the assembly of the young men together. For even the husband with the wife shall be taken, the aged with him that is full of days, and their houses shall be turned unto others with their fields and wives together. For I will stretch out my hand upon the inhabitants of the land, saith the Lord. For from the least of them, even to the greatest of them, every one is given to covetousness. Halt! You know, when I read this, I, I got sad in my heart. I got sad in my heart. Listen. From the least of them, even unto the greatest of them, every one is given to covetousness. What is that? Didn't the Lord say, do not covet thy neighbor's wife or anything of your neighbor just simply don't covet it. What is coveting? Anybody know what that word covet means? Has anybody ever defined it? Anybody ever defined what coveting means? Isn't that to want something that's not yours? To desire something that's not yours? To want something that's not yours? Right? Desire or want. That's good, Lou. That's good. That's good. What is marketing? Anybody know what marketing is? Come on, some of you people are good. You, you, you've been in the marketing field. What is marketing? What is that? What is marketing? Don't you formulate things, right? Don't you formulate things to create a desire in the consumer? What else is that called? What, what, now, what would they have called this back in the old days? Witchcraft. That's right, Nancy. Witchcraft. Sorceries. Witchcraft. This is what they would have called it. That's what they would have called it, witchcraft. And the Lord said, do not covet. Do not covet anything of your neighbors. Don't covet that. He told us what not to covet the substance of the world that belongs to somebody else. But guess what? It's a common practice in countries, and that's how countries survive through coveting. Now, there's something wrong with that. I don't care who you are. If the Lord said, don't do it, yet we create the desires, something is wrong with that. Witchcraft. They're being beguiled, enchanted. you telling me witchcraft is, does not prosper? Hmm? It absolutely does prosper. They say, wow, I wish I had that. Or, or a person's house. They say, wow, I wish I had that. They do this. They've created, formulated. And, and listen, marketing, marketing is one of the key components of a business. One of the key components of a business is marketing. Marketing, marketing, marketing. They don't, go, they don't care who they sell it to so long as you're able to sign the contract. They don't care who they sell it to. In most cases, marketing leads to the destruction of families and everything else. Why? Because people really can't afford it. But people will, if their desire gets high enough, people will find a way. They'll put themselves in debt to fulfill that desire. And here we see it. I will pour it out. I will pour out. The Lord's talking about his fury and his wrath. He's going to pour it out abroad. And why? Because of covetousness. Isn't that something? That's just absolutely 100% astounding. And it's all the way back in the book of Jeremiah. From the least of them, even into the greatest of them, everyone is given to covetousness. And from, listen, here's a big one. And from the prophet, even into the priest. 
everyone dealeth falsely. Now, can you say the Lord was really upset with him? This, we're, we're talking about Israel, folks. We're talking about Israel. They have healed also the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly saying peace, peace, when there is no peace. Can I, can I tell you about this daughter word again? A daughter is young, learning from the mother. Learning from the mother. Adopting the ways of the mother. And he just said, they have healed also the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly saying peace, peace. There is no peace. Who's a daughter of Jerusalem? Judah. Were they ashamed when they had committed abominations? No. They were not, they were not at all ashamed. Neither could they blush. Therefore, they shall fall among them that fall. At that time that I visit them, they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, and see and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. Also, I set a watchman. I like this one. I set a watchman over you. And guess what the watchmen were saying, folks? Hearken to the sound of the trumpet. I love that. Let me read that one more time. Jeremiah 6.17. Also, I set a watchman over you, saying, Hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, We will not hearken. Therefore, hear, ye nations, and know, O congregation, what is among them. Hear, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened unto my words, nor to my law, but rejected it. Then he says this, For what purpose cometh there to me and since from Sheba, and the sweet cane from a far country? Your burnt offerings are not acceptable, nor your sacrifices sweet unto me. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will lay stumbling blocks before this people. And the fathers and the sons together shall fall upon them. Neither and, and, and the neighbor and his friends shall perish. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, a people cometh from the north country, and a great nation shall be raised from the sides of the earth. They shall lay hold on the bow and the spear. They are cruel and have no mercy. Their voice roareth like the sea. And they ride upon horses. Set in array as men of war against thee, O daughter of Zion. Who is the daughter of Zion? Who is that? Jerusalem. We have heard the fame thereof. Our hands wax feeble. Anguish hath taken hold of us, and pain as the woman in travail. Go not forth into the field, nor walk by the way, for the sword of the enemy and the fear is on every side. O daughter of my people, gird thee with sackcloth. And wallow thyself in ashes, make thee mourning as for an only son, most bitter lamentation, for the spoiler shall suddenly come upon us. Haven't we read that before? Maybe in the book of Joel, maybe in the book of Ezekiel, maybe saw the evidence of this in the book of Revelation. So what do we have here, folks? What are we looking at with this mystery Babylon who carries the attributes and characteristics of fallen Jerusalem and Judah? Yet, also Babylon, which we clearly see in America and other nations. Who is this person? I'm telling you right now. If you're looking for a literal place, you're going to mess yourself up. That's why it says mystery. Mystery Babylon. Mystery Babylon means a Babylon not known in former times. Right? Mystery Babylon. Something you wouldn't think about. Mystery Babylon. Mystery Babylon. Why is the province of Mystery Babylon the same attributes from Jerusalem and Judah all the way to America and around the globe? Why? You see, Babylon sat atop the beast. The beast, if it's a collection of other nations, they do not like her. Now, let me tell you something. What are the two nations that the Middle Eastern folks want to destroy? What if they have, they have committed themselves to destroying who? Israel and who else? Who else is America? They don't like us. We sit atop. We we right now we're on top of the beast right now because because oh you can't have 
But here's the deal. Now, we know Israel is one because we're trampled underfoot for 42 months, but I submit to you this. The Lord gave us the same things He gave Israel, and we messed up worse than they did. They were the first fruits. We came along later as another fruit. They were the first fruits. Why did He say they were the first fruits? Because there was another. Ta da! If it was only one fruit that was ever going to be in existence, right? It wouldn't be a first fruit. That's why I say give the first fruits of your increase. If you had no increase or there was nothing else, he would say, just give me that. Right? He'd say, just give me that. But he didn't say, just give me that. He said, give me your first fruits. Give me the first fruits of your increase. First fruits of your increase. That's what I require. Or it's broader than that, because many people have grafted themselves into the clothing of this woman. They don't even know it. You're not going to partake of her. You're not riding atop the beast. You're covered by the blood of the Lamb. You belong to the Redeemer, to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. But there will come a falling away first. And these people who fall away, once knowing the Lord or walking as a walking abomination and fornicator and they too have become a harlot grafted into the clothing of the harlot clothed in sin it's a real pitiful thing notice also in the last days perilous times shall come for men shall be lovers of their own selves covetous boasters proud blasphemers it takes the grace of god to change us folks how can you be saved if you're not willing to repent. And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.